Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stay tuned until the end for a special offer. Hello, dear friends. Today's video is going to focus on probably the most intimidating step in the painting process, how to start a painting. I'm going to show you four different types of underpaintings that I've used over the past year to start my pieces and talk about the benefits and applications of each one. The first type of underpainting is no underpainting at all. For this small eight by 10 inch piece, I was on a tight deadline for a gallery show. And since I am prone to procrastination, I of course ended up with only a few days to start and finish this painting. So in the interest of time, I just drew the outlines directly onto my panel with a red pencil and then painted within the lines as carefully as I could. Kind of like an extremely difficult and insanely tedious coloring book. I just wanna throw out a disclaimer, I do not recommend starting your paintings this way. It's only a viable last minute option if you're tight on time, and also if your panel is small enough so that you can freehand sketch onto it with ease. For bigger panels and canvases, I would normally use a grid or transfer method because it's much harder to accurately measure proportions on a larger scale. I would also recommend starting with some sort of tone other than the plain white surface of the panel because it's not only quite jarring to look at, but also it's hard to visually measure the value hierarchy of your painting with such a bright, stark white surface. For example, if you looked at finished paintings that have the entire surface covered with paint, you would typically not find any value lighter than an empty white canvas, not even the brightest highlights. So if the value of your surface is dramatically brighter than the lightest value in your painting, it can be a little disorienting to calibrate all the values of your piece. I would normally recommend toning the panel so that you're starting off with a mid-tone baseline that can allow you to darken with dark values, but also when you lay down white paint on top of it, the paint is a visible value step brighter than your mid-tone base. The second type of underpainting is an ebauche, which is basically starting off your underpainting with a wash of basic color groups instead of one monochromatic wash. I first drew the basic composition with my pencil on my panel, then sprayed it with artist fixative so that the pencil lines won't smudge. And then I roughly and messily blocked in the different color groups with oil paint that was thinned with Gamsol, making sure that the pencil lines were still visible. I think this ebauche was quite messy to be honest, and I wasn't 100% satisfied with it. But this painting had so many different vibrant colors, it was still nice to be able to visualize how all the warm and cool colors related to each other right off the bat. Plus, the underpainting was so rough that I was more motivated than ever to cover it up with polished, perfectly rendered paint. <laughs> The benefit to an ebauche is you can establish your color temperature relationships ahead of time without worrying about rendering details yet. The third type of underpainting is my current go-to way to start a large piece, especially if I have a small poster study I want to emulate on a larger scale. I like to call it sketching with oils. I first drew a large 8x8 grid on my large panel. Then I sprayed the pencil lines with artist fixative and once that dried, I toned the panel with bohemian green earth oil paint thinned with Gamsol. The grid is to help me place the figure in the composition so that it's the correct size and position. I like to dive right into painting and sketch the block in for the figure using the same color with which I toned the panel. This method of underpainting is my current favorite because I don't have to worry about transferring a drawing onto a panel, which of course is a totally valid and sometimes necessary way to start a painting. But personally, I am just always impatient and overly eager to start painting as soon as possible. So if I can afford to skip the drawing transfer step, then I will. But if, for example, I decided I want to paint even bigger to the point where it would be impossible for me to measure the proportions and anatomy correctly, then I would first draw on a smaller surface, take a photo of the drawing, scale it up in Photoshop, print out the giant drawing, and then transfer it onto a larger panel. 
The last technique is called the wipeout, and it is the most challenging one for me because I've only done it once and I haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet. So if you'd like to see my exponentially more talented and experienced teacher do a proper wipeout on his masterpiece, he was kind enough to let me borrow some footage of his wipeout demo from class. So I'll be uploading that on my Patreon in a 30 minute tutorial diving deep into underpaintings. If you're interested in checking that out along with hundreds of hours of exclusive tutorials, visit patreon.com slash happydartist. So in a wipeout, the first step is to transfer a drawing onto your panel, which again, due to time constraints and my procrastination, I didn't have time to do. So I just drew directly onto the panel using a grid, which is also a viable method as long as your panel is small enough. I then sprayed the panel with fixative so that my pencil lines wouldn't smudge. Then I toned the entire panel with burnt umber paint thinned with Gamsol. You want the tone to be dark enough so that you can add lighter values onto it, but still thin and transparent enough for your pencil lines to show through underneath. Then a few minutes later, before the layer of burnt umber dries completely, I take a clean brush that was moistened with clean Gamsol and start wiping away the burnt umber tone in areas where there are the lighter values. I did a really messy job here because I'm still a noob at this and so I had to rely on adding titanium white paint to the highlights in order to smooth out the rough edges of my wipeout. There is a similar technique to this that my teachers call scumble in, where you first start off with the drawing, then tone the surface, much like a wipeout. But instead of wiping away the tone, you wait for it to dry completely and just add white paint on top of the tone where the lighter values are. But regardless, if you wipe away or add white on top, or if you use a combination of both, like I did here, this wipeout technique is great for establishing a basic value hierarchy before you start painting, so you know generally where the highlights, midtones, and shadows are, and how they all relate to each other. And also, having the drawing lines visible serves as a guideline for the anatomy, proportions, and composition, so that when you start rendering the detail, you can already know where everything is supposed to be. Alrighty. These are the four types of underpainting techniques that I've experimented with this past year, but please note that there are many different ways to execute the four techniques I showed you today, and even more different types of underpaintings in general. If there's one important thought I wanted to leave you with today, it's don't let the beginning of the process stress you out too much. The point of an underpainting is to help assist you during the painting process. It helps you get one challenge out of the way in the beginning stage so that you don't have to worry about it in the detailed rendering stage. So if you need help with color temperature relationships, then go with an ebauche. If you need help with accuracy and proportions, then go with a drawing transfer. If you need help with values and lighting, then go with a wipeout. But I encourage you all to experiment with learning different underpainting methods to find one or a combination of a few techniques that can specifically serve your needs the best. And that about wraps up today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope it was useful and I hope I made sense. And of course, you guessed it, my eternal never-ending sale is still going on in my shop. So if you'd like 20% off your order of prints and originals, just enter the code HOLIDAY at happyd-artist.com. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and even surprise art gift boxes, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. I wanted to quickly thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and for supporting my channel and the art community. I've actually enjoyed using Squarespace for four years now to build and host my online shop and website. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist for 10% off your first purchase. 
Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist.